Around noon on September 9th, the sky in Changchun City, Jilin Province, suddenly became as dark as night, with visibility less than 10 meters. Immediately afterwards, wind screamed and lightning flashed in many areas of the city. Pouring rain soon followed. The skyscrapers seemed to be shaking in the wind and was a very frightening sight. People rushed indoors to take shelter. The 20th Changchun International Agricultural and Food Expo that was held in Changchun was also hit by the violent storm. In the video, we can see the tents, tables, and chairs in the booths, and even small dump trucks being overturned. On the campus of Jilin University of Architecture, sign holders, flower pots, and other things were blown around by the strong wind. A netizen shared a video taken near Guangyuan Shopping Center in Quancheng District. In the video, rows of stalls were overturned by strong winds, and vendors were trying to save their stalls in the pouring rain. The video showed that the scene was a mess after the gale. The sturdy tree trunks and large branches were broken off, rows of bicycles were knocked down, and many cars on the roadside were also hit by branches and debris. Some people said that it's their first time seeing such a violent storm in Changchun, even more terrifying than doomsday movies. At 10.40 a.m. on the 9th, the Changchun Meteorological Observatory issued a yellow hail warning. At 11 a.m., another weather warning was issued. Hourly rainfall in Changchun City reached 20 millimeters, and at 3 p.m., hail began to fall in some areas. According to local news reports, the average rainfall in the urban area of Changchun from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. on the 9th was 30 millimeters. The largest rainfall occurred at the Changchun Meteorological Observatory, reaching 61.7 millimeters. However, such a large amount of rainfall did not cause the city to be flooded. Why? That's mainly because Changchun has a unique drainage system. It was built by the Japanese during the Manchukuo period in 1934, and many facilities are still in use today. As the capital of the puppet state of Manchukuo, Changchun was called Xinqing at that time. In Chinese, Xinqing literally means new capital. Changchun was designed and constructed by Japan for its new capital. Its urban planning is the result of active advocacy and participation of Goto Shinpei, the father of modern Japanese urban planning. Goto Shinpei was in charge of the reconstruction of Tokyo after the Great Kanto earthquake in 1923. The planning of Shinking was an attempt to fully absorb the new ideas and technologies accumulated from years of experience in Japanese urban planning. The urban design of Changchun was among the best in the world at that time. 
The first is that the road system in Changchun is extremely reasonable. Looking at the map of Changchun, you will find that straight, circular, and rectangular road systems were designed in the Xinqing era. These road systems complement each other's strengths and weaknesses. The main roads are multi-centered and radially laid out. Large squares are designed at every important location. The city center is designed as a park, which was not even seen in Europe at that time. Changchun is also the first city with a planned subway system in China. The second is that the drainage system in Changchun is perfect. In the process of rebuilding Tokyo after the Great Kanto earthquake, Riki Sano, who served as the think tank of Goto Shinpei, strongly requested all the new neighborhoods in Xinqing be planned with flushing toilets. Xinqing became the very first city in Asia to fully use flushing toilets. The popularization of flushing toilets in Japanese cities became a thing after the 1960s. Another notable feature of Changchun's drainage system is that it adopted a design which separates sewage and rainwater. Such a design raised the requirements for urban drainage projects. Changchun is located in the Manchurian Plain, where annual precipitation is low and rainfall is generally concentrated in the summer. In order to keep the new neighborhoods moist and to regulate temperature, the designers adopted the method of draining sewage and rainwater separately, which can not only remove the stagnant water but can also make use of the rainwater. Rainwater will flow into the adjustment ponds. These ponds are not artificially constructed concrete tanks, but small natural rivers and artificial lakes. The tributary of the Yitong River flowing through the urban area was intercepted with dams and was turned into an artificial lake. And then the rainwater drainage system will divert the rainwater into the lake. Parks have been built around these small rivers and artificial lakes as places for citizens to rest and relax. The third is the high proportion of green space. Parks around small rivers and artificial lakes, together with wedge-shaped or circular green belts inlaid in various blocks, constitute the Xinqing green space system. The per capita green area of Xinqing at that time far exceeded the domestic level in Japan, and is comparable to that of modern cities in Europe and the United States at that time. To this day, walking on the streets of Changchun, especially on some streets in Chaoyang District, if we paid attention to the road's sewer covers, we can still find that some sewage covers have a rain character cast in the middle, while other sewage covers have a sewage character cast in the middle. This is the proof that sewage and rainwater were drained separately. This kind of drainage design is worth keeping and learning from, and is considered very advanced even for modern cities. In our previous video, we introduced a sponge city project in Zhengzhou. People were surprised to find that a similar idea was actually realized in Xinqing last century. This design really played a big role. When drought occurred in 1942, the adjustment ponds played a huge role in mitigating the drought in Xinqing. The drainage systems in two other cities in China are also worth mentioning. One year, there was a lot of rain, which highlighted the drainage systems of Qingdao City in Shandong Province and Ganzhou City in Jiangxi Province. The drainage systems of these two cities not only prevented urban waterlogging in the face of heavy rainfall, but also dwarfed the drainage systems of some large modern cities, such as Guangzhou, Nanchang, and Wuhan exposing the shortcomings of urban construction in China. Urban construction experts say that the drainage system in the old city of Qingdao is the best in China and was built by the Germans more than 100 years ago. The drainage system in Ganzhou was left over from the northern Song dynasty and is almost 1,000 years old. The urban drainage systems built by the ancients a thousand years ago can not only still be used today, but can also protect the people from floods when heavy rain strikes putting modern civilization to shame. 